Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is a special and exciting day for the University of Nebraska, and uh, especially for me because I have the honor and privilege to introduce the 28th head coach of Husker basketball, Fred Hoiberg. Is it my turn? It is. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, I, I, I want to thank Bill. Uh, I want to thank Chancellor Green and, and President Bounds for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, it's, actually, it's a very emotional day uh, for me, for my family, a lot of who are sitting over here uh, this afternoon. And we have great ties to this state. We have great ties to this university. And it starts with my grandparents. And you know, I know a lot has been written about my grandpa Bush, who coached here back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, but my other grandfather, uh, Otto Hoiberg, was a history professor here for almost 30 years. And uh, to be honest with you, he's the smartest person uh, that I have ever known. And I had a, a great chance. He moved uh, back to Iowa uh, in his later years and, and was able to spend a lot of time with him. And those were very special moments. Uh, to be able to talk to my grandfather because of how worldly and how smart uh, that he was. Uh, my parents, uh, who are here today, Eric and Karen, uh, both went to uh, uh, Nebraska. They are alums, 1966. Uh, Dad went on to get his master's in 69 and his PhD in 72, uh, which is the year I was born here at Lincoln General. And uh, I don't remember a lot about Lincoln as, as a kid. I moved to Ames when I was two. When my dad got a job offer at Iowa State, he also got a job offer at Kansas. I'll always say I'm forever grateful to my dad for making the right decision. <laughs> uh, but uh, also, I want to introduce a few other people. My brother Steve uh, is here. Steve lives in Omaha now and actually taught at the University of Nebraska Omaha for many years until his current position with Siemens Corporation. His wife Carrie uh, is here, a Nebraska native. Uh, daughter Isabel, my niece, is in seventh grade, and Emma, who was hired by Coach Miles actually this last year in the basketball department. So, better behave yourself, kid. Uh, my cousin Joe, my cousin Joe is here. He just moved to Lincoln last year. Uh, his mother, Bonnie, uh, is also a Nebraska uh, alum. And then my aunt and uncle are here. My uncle Dennis, who uh, is a Clearwater, Nebraska legend. He's a high school, uh, Nebraska High School Hall of Famer. And my Aunt Jane, who also went to Nebraska, and you'll notice Jane of the game. She'll have those basketball half masks on. Uh, she'll be wearing that and be the one with the Go Big Fred sign. So uh, th thanks for coming. Uh, then also uh, I want to introduce my wife, uh, Carol, who's, who's here today. Carol and I, I can't believe we've been together now for 30 years. And uh, go. I won't tell the story, Carol, that you asked me to prom when I was a sophomore, but that's, that's when we met uh, back at Ames High School. And, you know, she's the rock of our family. And when you're a coach, you need a great support system, and, and I have that. And, and a lot of that has to do with, with my parents, my brothers, and, and also my wife. Uh, our four kids could not make it today. Our daughter, Paige, is, uh, is a senior at Kansas. She graduates from Kansas, which just kind of freaks me out that it's gone as fast as it has. Uh, she will graduate in May. Our son Jack, uh, who we just spent time with this last weekend in Washington, D.C., he's a, a, a player on the Michigan State team, and they're getting ready for the Final Four, which has been a great thrill uh, for our family to see Jack and his teammates cut down the nets uh, in D.C. Last, uh, just this last week. And then our twins, uh, Sam and Charlie, who we were going to bring, but they missed class on Monday, and they're going to miss class again on Friday, and we thought we should probably keep them <laughs> in school as, uh, as much as we can. But, uh, when you make a move like this, uh, you have to have full support from everybody, and uh, we have that, and it, it's, it's very special. And, you know, the, the vision that Bill uh, laid out to me when we started talking about this opportunity, uh, I see real potential here to have long-term success, and a lot of that has to do with uh, the facilities that are here. And, you know, we played an exhibition game a couple years ago when I was coaching for the Bulls, and... Uh, I was just absolutely amazed. It was actually a really good game against the Mavericks. Doug McDermott hit the game winner uh, on a sideline out of bounds play we call Larry Bird. Um, that's neither here nor there. But anyway, it was, uh, it, was a gr it was a great moment to see those facilities. We played a closed door scrimmage actually against Doc Sadler back in 2011 when the practice facility was just being built. And I'm telling you, uh, these facilities are as nice as any in the country. And that's a very attractive thing when you're trying to attract recruits 
uh, to a market like this, uh, and also the fan support. The fan support is second to none. Uh, what I've seen going back, I was a diehard Husker football fan as a kid uh, growing up, and it's just amazing. Every seat in this uh, stadium has been filled since 1962. Uh, and then the basketball games, you know, to see the atmosphere. I watched a lot of Big Ten basketball this last year because of Jack and because of Michigan State. Uh, and it's just such an unbelievable atmosphere. And I think Tim Miles did a great job and deserves a lot of credit for bringing excitement uh, to this program. And now it's our job uh, to build on that uh, and, and hopefully uh, become a consistent winner. Uh, I talked earlier about my grandfather, uh, Jerry Bush. It's just, it's such a thrill for me uh, to be able to walk different buildings but on the same sidelines uh, that my grandfather did and you know I it, it's it's pretty amazing you know he probably has the best win in the history of Nebraska basketball uh, they had lost earlier in the season against a Kansas team led by Wilt Chamberlain 103 to 43 is what they got beat and I asked him before the game when did you know you were gonna lose he said when we got out of the bus and Wilt reached across the uh, across the roof and closed the door uh, that way, we knew we were going to get beat. So, uh, but then to go back and win that game, and Jimmy Kabaki, who I think was hurt that entire game, they had him uh, go in with about four or five minutes left, and he went in and hit the game winner. Uh, but it was, you know, not very often you shut school down with a basketball win, but they actually did that. That next day, they shut class down, and then that following week, uh, to go on and beat Kansas State, a team led by Bob Boozer, who was number one team in the nation. So that was, I know, a really fun week for my grandfather and, and for my family. Uh, you know, I, I didn't get to know him, uh, like I said, very well. I, he passed away when I was three years old. Uh, but to hear the stories, uh, Albert Maxey, Albert is here today. He played for my grandfather. Albert has always been uh, great to our family. But I always got letters when I got into coaching, and even when I was playing a little bit in the NBA, from my grandfather's former players, and just to know the impact that he had on their lives. Uh, same thing with professors. I get that, a lot of things from my dad and, and my other grandfather, Otto, uh, but to hear from my grandpa's players uh, is really cool. And to know the type of person that my grandfather was and the impact that he had in the community uh, here because of the type of personality uh, that he was uh, is always a lot of fun uh, for me to hear. So I'm excited about this, guys. I, I met with the team uh, just a couple minutes before we came down here, and I talked to them about uh, the opportunity that we have moving forward. And you know, this is such a special time of year. Uh, the greatest sporting event in the world is going on right now uh, with the NCAA tournament. And I, I challenge them the, the amount of work it takes. Uh, I was fortunate enough. I played 10 years in the NBA, and I didn't play because I was the most athletic. I didn't play because I was the most gifted. Uh, the reason I play is because I was the hardest worker and nobody was going to outwork me and that's how I got to that level and that's what I'm going to demand and expect out of our players is to go out every day and give everything we can and put an exciting product on the floor uh, that will make our fans proud and, and that's what we're going to strive to do starting the week after the Final Four. We're going to get going with our workouts. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have a foreign trip this year to get a head start in the season uh, over in Italy. Uh, but there's a lot of work to do. Uh, I hit the road tomorrow. We're going to get in the plane and we're going to go out and we're going to see some kids uh, and get this thing moving uh, right away. And we lose a lot. There's a lot of really good players uh, that are graduating from this institution and we've got a lot to replace. And again, our players uh, understand that. And, uh, and, and again, we know we have to do everything possible uh, to put ourselves in a position where we're going to be successful and do it consistently. Bill, Robin Wash with uh, HuskerOnline.com, Rivals.com. Can you just maybe walk us through the timeline of when first contact was made with Fred and his camp and just kind of the evolution of leading up to today? Well, uh, certainly. Uh, here's a little known fact, and, and uh, I think it needs to be pointed out. We got a great fraternity of coaches here. And... Um, Fred joins some other uh, very, very gifted coaches, and, and, and they all stick together. And I had one of them, who's a great coach himself, um, ask if he could come meet with me. And I said, sure. And that was Mark Hankins, our men's golf coach, uh, who's won a few Big Ten championships himself. And uh, he brought Fred's name up to me, and I, and I said, well, how do you know about Fred Hoiberg? And he goes, well, it, I, 
he's, he's my classmate, my great friend, and we were roommates in college. And I go, okay, sit down. And uh, because I was intrigued, you know, my boys know all about Fred and, and what he accomplished as a great college player and 10 years in the NBA and, and was coach of the Bulls, you know, I mean, that, that's uh, pretty good credentials. But um, I, I learned about Fred and, and his family and his in, incredible uh, um, integrity and in the things that are, that are important to me. But it, you got to remember, during that time, uh, I was supporting my my coaches and where we were going. We were in a bit of a slump then, and uh, so I cataloged that in my mind and, um, and I went about my business. Uh, later on, um, I thought it might be smart maybe just to meet the gentleman, and I did. That was on March 4th, uh, and uh, we sat down for a little bit in Chicago and really just to get to know each other because, as you all know, um, I like to look at options. And uh, if I did have to make a difference or a change and, and do something else, I wanted to make sure that uh, I had my list in order. And you've heard about the list. So that's that. Fred, welcome to Nebraska. Chris Hetty from the World Herald. Um, why decide to come back to the college game after being in the NBA for five years? Well, yeah, that's, that, that's a great question. I, uh, I, I thought a lot about that. And, uh, you know, first of all, I'm thankful for the opportunity that I had in Chicago. You know, I'm very thankful that they gave me uh, the chance to coach at that level. Uh, it was a hard decision. I had great years at Iowa State, my alma mater. Uh, you know, and I could have probably stayed there for a long time. And it was a very difficult decision that, that, that uh, you know, my wife and my family and I talked a lot about. Uh, you know, we just felt that we wanted to take that opportunity to coach at the highest level for a storied franchise, and we, and we did that. Uh, you know, there's some things I'm proud of that we did while we were there. Um, you know, year one, we led, a league in, led the league in a category you don't want to lead it in. We led it in injuries. And, you know, I had 10 rotation players that missed double-digit games, including two starters that missed over 50. And, you know, just one of those years, we just we were too inconsistent. We could never get uh, on that proper uh, consistent role that we needed to be on, and we ended up missing the playoffs by a game. Uh, that following year, uh, we brought Dwayne Wade in uh, and his lovely wife, Gabrielle Union, who's a Nebraska native. And we, we talked a lot about Nebraska football, actually, when, she, when they came uh, to Chicago. Or, yeah, to Chicago. Uh, and brought Rondo in, and you know we had some ups and downs. But then I thought we're playing as well as any team in the East at the end of that uh, season, and you know we made the playoffs, and we're up two nothing before Rondo broke his thumb. And you know who knows what would have happened had we won that series. Uh, that following season, we rebuilt, which was the right move. Uh, you know I was very happy. We had a, a six-week stretch where we were healthy, where we had the second-best record in the Eastern Conference, and uh, you know really did a good job of development uh, of our players. And then this last season. Uh, you know, the change was made, you know, almost halfway through the season. So I uh, had a great, again, uh, learning experience. Uh, my thing going into this year was I wanted to be in a good situation, whatever level that may be. And uh, I did talk to some other schools. And, uh, you know, I don't know what NBA possibilities are going to open up. But when I did look at it, uh, I didn't see something that really excited me. Uh, and, you know, again, we talked a lot about this. We debated this. We just came to this final decision about four days ago that we were actually going to do this. Uh, contrary to the rumors that were out there that this thing's been done for a while, it hasn't. Uh, you know, one thing my wife and I talked about is we want this to be our last stop. And we're excited about this. Again, a lot of it's because of our family history here. Uh, but maybe as important are the facilities and the resources that we have. Uh, in the fan support. It's going to be second to none. And we feel that we can build uh, a, a program that, that consistently wins. Uh, but that's, that's what went into it. It was, it was a, a difficult decision when you have kids that are comfortable in, in their current uh, uh, positions, uh, you know, to move them and uproot them. A lot goes into those decisions. So, you know, again, when we did finally come to it and we sat down with the family, uh, everybody was supportive of this move. Coach. Jake Bartecki, KRNU. Um, you mentioned the Big Ten being a really competitive conference. 
how has you know your experience coaching at Iowa State in a competitive Big 12 and at the highest level in the NBA? How do you see that helping you going into the Big Ten? Well, I think it helps me a lot. I, I can I can promise you this: I'm a lot better coach right now because of my years in the NBA than I was before I got there. And you have to be when you're coaching against uh, you know the best minds uh, in the basketball world, and uh, that helped make me a, a better coach. Uh, we did have, you know, listen, the, the years we had at Iowa State, I couldn't be more proud of what we accomplished there. And, and I'm really happy with the way that program has continued to move in a positive direction under the leadership of Steve Prohm. I think he's done an incredible job uh, there continuing uh, on with, with the group and, and, again, another good class that he has uh, right now. So, you know, when, when, you, when you coach at the different levels, and, you know, the good thing for me is I've seen it from every angle. I've seen it as a player. Uh, in a power conference. I've seen it from a player in the NBA on different rosters, on experienced teams, on young teams where I was a captain, uh, as a front office executive to where I spent time as a general manager, and now, uh, you know, going back and coaching in college and the NBA. So I've had, uh, you know, again, pretty much every way you can look at it. So I take on all those experiences, and I know I've still got a long ways to grow. And, you know, again, when I was let go, uh, back in this, I'll always remember the date. It was my wife's birthday on December 3rd. Uh, it was something where you know I took those next couple months and really reflected. What could I have done better? Uh, what did I like that, that we did? And how can we improve going forward? And I think everybody that's in the position that I've recently been in as far as a coach that was let go and pretty much all of us that ha have been in coaching, that's happened at one point or another. The important thing is you grow from it, you get better from it, uh, and the next opportunity you have, you do the best job you can. Coach, when a, when a Fred Hoiberg team is really clicking, what, what does that look like? I mean, what, what are the optics? What, what will we see? Well, you know, first thing that we try to do, we, we, we try to play with great pace. And, and that, that, that was one thing that, that we always tried to have, uh, you know, especially when you look back at my teams at Iowa State. Now, we did that in different ways. Uh, my first year, we had a point guard in Deontay Garrett, who was really a, a good player, and we had a couple bigs that could shoot it. So we ran a lot of pick and roll, pick and pop uh, type actions. Uh, my second year, we had a kid named Royce White, who was a transfer from the University of Minnesota, and we put the ball in his hands uh, because we felt he was our advantage, uh, a mismatch, and we led the nation in three pointers that year because he could draw the defense. We spread the floor out with five around the perimeter. Uh, and he uh, would make the defense converge and, and make the right play. Uh, so I've done it different ways, but the one thing that is consistent is uh, the fast-paced, uh, exciting brand of basketball that we want to play. And, and again, you have to be in great shape to do that. You have to have the right personnel to do that. Uh, you know, and we'll see how that is with this roster. I, you know, I watched some games. I haven't seen a lot yet, and I plan to go back and watch all the games from last year. Uh, with the addition of some of the players that are coming in here next year, which I'm really excited about, uh, we'll try to put the right system together uh, to take advantage of their skill sets. Hey, Fred. Er Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Uh, how quickly do you think you can get this thing up and running to a, a, a real contending level in the Big Ten? And how hard are you going to have to hit the transfer market uh, right out of the gate? Well, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's something that we're going to... You know, my first year at Iowa State, we took over a team. You know, we had four or five scholarship players, and there wasn't a lot of expectations that year. Uh, but we went out that first season and, and, and put together a 500 record, a 16 of 16 record, uh, which was respectable. Uh, and you know, that group was as fun a, co a group that I've ever had to coach. It was a group of six guys that we played uh, with a couple others that played spot minutes. But those guys were great. They bought into what we were trying to do, and they really set the tone and set a culture. Uh, for what we wanted everything to look like. And then I had a group of four transfers that sat out uh, that I knew when that, they came eligible, we'd have a chance to be pretty special. And then those next four years, we ended up uh, building on that, making NCAA tournaments. Uh, but my philosophy as far as recruiting, we just want to get the best talent uh, as possible on the floor, however that may be. And when we were at Iowa State, we started that with transfers. But what that led to, once we got our style of play established and had some success, is that led to some really good four-year players. And that got our foot in the door because we were always in the top 10, top 15 in the nation in offensive efficiency, and teams liked how we played. Uh, and the other thing we did is you know, we, we gave our guys a chance to be successful and play at the next level. Um, I'm proud of the fact that we had nine guys that played in the NBA uh, on those five years we were there. And the ones that didn't play in the NBA, a lot of those guys are making uh, great livings playing overseas at a high level. 
you know, so I think once we establish uh, the way we want to play, and again, you get the recruits on campus and they see these beautiful facilities, we're going to have a chance. We're going to have a chance with any kid that walks in here. Fred. Randy Peterson. Um, what do you say to... Where are you? I don't want to see you either. What do you, what do you say to Iowa State fans who may feel a bit bewildered about, about this um, going to Nebraska, uh, you know, bordering school? Uh, I don't know. What should I say to them? <laughs> I mean, this, this is, uh, uh, again, I, you know, I, I love the direction of Iowa State basketball right now. And, and I feel, you know, we played a pretty important part in, in the success uh, that that program's having. And, you know, again, I think the world is Steve Prohm, and, and I love what he's doing, and, and I'm excited that Jamie gave him a long-term commitment, extended him again, uh, where he can continue to lead that program uh, to greater and greater heights. But, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what we did there. Um, you know, I, I, listen, when you go to school someplace and you grow up in a town and you were part of something special, uh, you know, I think we can always hold on to that. And it, it was a great run. Uh, you know, I loved everything that we did. I loved going back. Uh, you know, I, I always try to get back for, for a football game. Uh, you know, I went back for a basketball game this year. I spoke to the team. Uh, you know, it's, it's something that's a lot of fun for me to watch. As far as what do you, what do you say, uh, you know, I, again, I, I'm excited about the direction of Iowa State basketball. And uh, again, I'll always be a fan because I'm, I'm an alum, alumnus of the university. Alumnus or alumni, Dad? What is it? <laughs> alumnus? <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's, uh, uh, but again, I, you know, they've got a great thing going. And I, I hope that, you know, they, they would support this, uh, this situation that I'm in now and, and that they would be excited for, for where we are because this is something that my family feels very good about. Fred, Chris Bassett at Lincoln Journal Star. What was your reaction when Bill first reached out to you and what was kind of that initial meeting like in your eyes? Yeah, it, it really was. It was just kind of a get to know, get to know you meeting. And, you know, again, I, I think the world to Tim Miles. And, you know, again, he is, he's a guy that I've had a really good relationship with, and he's done a lot of great things for my family. You know, not only hiring my niece, Emma, but he did some great things to recognize some of my grandfather's teams. Uh, and, and I've talked to him a lot about that. I talked to Tim two days ago and, and had a really good conversation uh, with him. So, um, you know, I didn't want to say it, it really was hard for me to see all the rumors that were out there because I didn't want to disrupt what was going on. You know, he was coaching the team. Uh, you know, he had a group of guys that were playing very well, and, and I did not want to be disruptive in that. So, uh, you know, the initial meeting with Bill, and I told him, I said, this is just, you know, if you want to get to know each other a little bit, great. Uh, you know, but let's wait until this thing's over if, uh, you know, if you do decide to go in a different direction. And, you know, when that happened, uh, again, we went back and forth a lot. My wife and I, one day, wake up, I said, uh, I don't have any interest. I've enjoyed going to yoga with you. I've enjoyed going and drinking coffee with the girls. And it was one of my coaches, former coaches, called me one time, and he was just miserable. He was miserable. They had a bad week, and he said, what are you doing right now? I said, well, I'm sitting here at my table doing a puzzle in my robe and watching Price is Right. <laughs> it's pretty good. I liked it. And uh, so, you know, that, uh, we thought about sitting out this year. And uh, we thought about maybe do we wait and see what opens up in the NBA. But this situation, Bill, once the decision was made to move in a new direction, uh, we were very attracted to it because, A, Bill's vision, uh, and B, because of the facilities. And again, that, that for me, three years ago or whenever that game was, to be able to see that and say, my goodness, this is beautiful. This is, this is not typical of a college uh, arena to have this and the practice facility and everything about it and the support. So, you know, when, you, when we put everything together, uh, you know, that's when we decided to make the move. Tim Kern with KLIN in Lincoln. Uh, question for Coach Hoiberg. Um, I understand you don't have a crystal ball in front of you, but I am curious to know how long do you think it'll take to get the program to a level of success that you wanted at? Wouldn't it be great if we all had crystal balls? Wouldn't life be so much easier <laughs> if we had that? Um, you know what? I, I don't know. It, 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 again, I, I met with the players for the first time today, and I've had the opportunity to talk to a few of them uh, on the phone. And, uh, you know, again, I, I, we didn't have real high expectations, but we didn't put on limits uh, on the first year when we took over a program that didn't have very many scholarship players. Uh, and, you know, I don't know if anybody would have guessed that we would have had been back in the NCAA tournament in year two. So I'm going into this thing with an open mind. And I know this is a group of guys that are going to work extremely hard. 
uh, you know, I loved meeting today. You looked up and everybody had eye contact with you. And, you know, we're all going to meet individually on Friday to lay out expectations and, uh, and what our schedule is going to be moving forward the rest of this spring before they go home for the break. Uh, so, again, I, you know, if we come in here and we work, my message has always been to the team, if we're the hardest playing most together team, we're going to have a chance. And, and that's what we're going to strive to do. Fred, over here. Hi. Yeah. Hey, Keith. How you doing? Uh, Keith Murphy, WHO. Uh, Fred, what do you make of this fast developing rivalry with the Iowa Hawkeyes? <laughs> <laughs> you got something better than that, Keith, don't you? <laughs> uh, listen, I, I grew up in a. Uh, it was a fun rivalry to play in. There, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, I remember one of the greatest games I ever saw was in Hilton Coliseum when I was sitting underneath the basket as a ball boy and watched. Uh, LaFesta Rose pouring 54 uh, against I was most, one of the most incredible games uh, I've ever witnessed. Uh, you know, to play in that rivalry was a lot of fun. Uh, to coach in the rivalry was a lot of fun. I, you know, I think Fran has done an incredible job at the University of Iowa. Uh, you know, now back in the Big Ten, this will be the first time that we play each other twice uh, in, in the season. But listen, I, I have great respect. I have great respect for, for, uh, uh, for Fran, uh, for his family, and, and for the way he runs his program. Coach Matt Reynoldson from KLK and TV in Lincoln. You talked a little bit about expectations. Building off what you were saying, is coming into a new program with expectations like this program has had in the last five years, is raising those expectations synonymous with raising the profile of a program, do you think, nationally? Uh, that's, that's a great question. I, uh, you know, again, I, I, I don't know. You know, expectations, we'll, we'll see what they are. Uh, we lose a lot again. I think the world of, uh, you know, Palmer, a hell of a player. Uh, you look at Watson, um, you lose Copeland, obviously, and, and I know that was a tough blow uh, with the injuries. Uh, you know, and we'll see what happens with, with, the, with the transfers and the portal and all that, uh, you know, in the early entry, uh, uh, you know, candidates. So, you know, we'll see. I don't know what the roster is going to look like at this point. So, you know, it's hard to put expectations on a team when you don't know exactly uh, what things look like. But again, guys, I, you know, I wouldn't have taken this job if I didn't fully expect to turn it around and win uh, consistently. Um, you know, and, and I talked about Tim earlier. He did a great job of, of making basketball exciting uh, here at Nebraska. And, and again, it's our job now uh, to go out and, and try to be a consistent winner. And, and, and that's what we're going to strive to do. Chris Hetty from the Omaha World Herald again. Um, Nebraska is the only Power Five school to not have won an NCAA tournament game. You obviously won a couple at Iowa State with the facilities and with you know the way that you've, you've run the program. Do you have any doubt that you'll be able to duplicate what you did at Iowa State here in Nebraska? Well, yeah. Again, I, you know, I, I do see great potential here. There, there's there's no question about that. And you know, a big thing for us is you know, if you can get these kids on campus, there's a lot of great things to sell, and and that that's going to be something. Uh, that we're going to do. Right now is a, a quiet, dead period as far as recruiting uh, until the Final Four is over. Uh, but as soon as that is, is, is done, you know, we expect to get some high-level kids in here and, and hopefully uh, you know, sell them on what we have to offer uh, and put a really good competitive team on the floor next year. Matt Hardesty, Daily Nebraskan. There's been reports of some of the staff you've already added. Could you elaborate on what some of them are going to bring to this program? Yeah, the, you know, the only one I can talk about is Matt. Matt. Matt's the only one that signed this contract. We're still in talks uh, with, with some of the other ones. But uh, Matt is a guy that I hired as an intern, actually, when I was in the front office uh, as an assistant GM in Minneapolis. And Matt came in, and I could tell right away uh, how good he was. And, you know, he was the most impressive thing about Matt was his ability to build a relationship. And, and that's, what it's, that's what's so important at any level is to be able to connect with the players and connect with the kids. And Matt's as good as I've ever seen, uh, you know, not only with kids, but with coaches, um, with families. And that's what makes him a great recruiter. And you know, he's going to put us in front of some really high-level players. And you know, it's up to us to show how we're going to play and, and show film of what we're going to do and show these facilities. Uh, but Matt, uh, I think, is as good a recruiter as there is in the country. And, uh, and I'm excited to have him on board. Austin Norman. Coach Austin Norman, Karen, you radio. You're a, prolif you're a prolific three-point shooter. How do you train your guys to shoot without hesitation and let it fly when they're in rhythm? 
oh, you'll see us play. Some people look at the guy next to them and say, what the hell was that shot? But, you know, we're, we, we always, for, for my, actually, I think all five years, we led the Big 12 in, in three-point shooting. Uh, and the one year we led the nation in three-point shooting. We, we, you know, big thing for our team, you know, again, you can play fast, but you really have to drill it. Because if you don't, you're going to be throwing that thing all over the map. And, uh, you know, I love shooting threes in transition. And before the defense gets set, if we can come down and run a ball screen and make a team execute their pick and roll defense early in the possession and play off it uh, with good spacing, we're going to have a chance to get great looks and great shots. Uh, we're going to work at it hard. We have a, a skill development uh, program that, that I think we're all uh, very confident with and uh, is proven to make players better and more skilled. And, you know, we took some guys. You know, I had a player named Dustin Hogue who didn't shoot threes when he played in junior college. He became over a 40% three-point shooter uh, in, in, in one of the best conferences in basketball. So we put a lot of time into it. We practice it. Uh, but yeah, we, we get them up there. And again, I, you know, one thing, I was a little bit into analytics when I was at Iowa State, but when you get to the NBA, you really understand how big a part the analytics play in the game and the numbers that go into it and where the best percentage shots are on the floor. And if you can create uncontested threes, and shots at the rim, uh, you're going to have a chance to have a pretty darn efficient offense. And, and, and again, that's something that we'll, uh, we'll look to do. Travis Hines, Ames Tribune. Fred, how has, I guess, the landscape of college basketball changed in the last nine years that when you start to build this program might be different than when you did at Iowa State in 2010? Yeah, it's good to see you, Travis, first of all. Nice shoes. Um, <laughs> Not that much different, Travis. I don't think. You know, there's there's probably there's more transfers in the in the game now uh, than than there was. There was a lot when I uh, took over at Iowa State, but now there's a thousand there's a thousand kids in that transfer portal. Uh, so, uh, you know, back when we first started at Iowa State, you know, there wasn't a lot of schools that were taking transfers. You still would sprinkle see teams sprinkle them in uh, to 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 help their rosters. But now, uh, you know, it's a pretty big part of teams in how they. Uh, how they manufacture a, a group of players and a roster. So uh, I think that maybe be as, is as big a thing as any. Um, you know, when we got Royce, we were competing against Kentucky. Uh, we were fortunate because Kentucky was too far away from home uh, for Royce. Uh, but now you're competing against a lot more schools, I think, when, when you look at that transfer pool. My name is uh, Rex Eckwell. I'm over here. I played for your grandfather for th the first three years he was here, and he had quite an influence on me and my life. Uh, he was a great guy. My question is, you were quite a football player. Do you anticipate being able to help Scott some? <laughs> I had a, I, I, first of all, thank you for those words about, about my grandfather. Um, I, Scott came and, and said hello to me today. He actually called me this morning. Very nice of him to reach out. Uh, and. Yeah, I plan on being on the sidelines. I told him, I, I, you know, I was with Matt Nagy. I got to know Matt Nagy of the Bears here uh, this last year pretty well. And I went and spent a day with Matt with the Bears and just watched how he did it and everything and had a great offensive mind. So I'm going to give Scott a few things to look at. Um, you know, I, uh, that is one thing. Um, you know, I, again, growing up a huge Nebraska fan, uh, you know, I was, I was offered a scholarship by Tom Osborne back in, uh, in high school. And that, that, that was such a thrill for me to be recruited by a guy that, you know, I looked up to. It was kind of a larger than life figure, to be honest with you, when you grow up a Nebraska football fan. Uh, those were the Tommy Frazier years. And I'm actually, I'm really convinced that he would have put 50 pounds on me and made me a tight end. <laughs> And I probably wouldn't be here today. I'm, hell, I could have been Gronk before Gronk was Gronk. But uh, yeah, that's. Uh, but that, that was fun. That was fun to be recruited. And, and again, I think the world of Scott. Uh, you know, I'm lo really looking forward. I, one thing about Iowa State, we had a great community of coaches, and we were all very close. And I'm looking forward to building those same relationships with, with the entire staff. Hey, Fred, Robin Wash with HuskerOnline.com. I just want you mentioned getting on the road recruiting here very quickly. I was curious just what the response has been with the current 2019 signees that obviously committed to play for a different coaching staff, and then also what your plan is to sell Nebraska on the recruiting front and some of the main pitches you think you're going to make. Yeah, I, I, I've had really good conversations with the three guys, with, uh, with Gervais, uh, with Micah, and with a call. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a big thing this week is getting out and, and seeing – Seeing those guys and talking to them, and uh, you know, hopefully securing 
uh, you know, their commitments. And, you know, I understand it, it, it is tough when a change is made and, you know, what your plans are. And they, are, they all have great questions uh, for me. And, you know, the important thing is now to get in front of them and, and to hopefully start building a relationship uh, to where they're comfortable uh, with us and with our current staff. Bill, you've had a quiet day. Oh, ask you I'm going to join and listen to Fred. <laughs> you've now hired Scott Frost, and you've now hired Fred Hoiberg, two coaches that a lot of people have been trying to hire, but you got them. What are your expectations for the Nebraska Athletic Department for the near future? Well, I think we're in, in real good shape. I've actually hired five new head coaches since I've been here, and they're all very high caliber, and join a uh, nucleus of very talented individuals. So... Um, this is, a, this is a special day, and it's a fun day. Uh, there's excitement in the air, uh, not unlike uh, the one you're referring to with football. So uh, the expectations are, are just this. Uh, this is a, a tremendous university, and we're showing and proving uh, in, in the athletic arena as well as academically across this campus that we are truly a destination for the very best. And uh, I expect these coaches to be here for a long time, and we're going to see a tremendous amount of respect, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, typically at these celebrations and announcements, uh, it's customary for the athletic director to present the new head coach with a ball cap or a jersey or something like that. But we are unique. We've got a unique coach with a unique situation. So today, in lieu of a jersey or a cap, you probably got tons of those and you're going to get more. Uh, it, it's fun for me to present to Fred the original press release of his grandfather's hiring from 1955. So. Yeah, thank you.